Imagine waking up every morning and feeling a tightness in your chest as soon as you open your eyes. Your mind starts racing with all the possible scenarios and outcomes of the day ahead. You worry about everything from what you're going to wear to work, whether or not you left something on the stove. You worry about your health and if that tightness in your chest is something serious. You replay conversations from the day before and wondering if you said something wrong or maybe somebody misunderstood you. You constantly ask yourself what if questions and imagine the worst case scenarios. You catastrophize every situation, turning small problems into huge, overwhelming ones. And the more you worry, the more hypervigilant your body becomes. This is what it's like to live with overthinking and asking yourself what if questions and catastrophizing every worst case scenario. Whether you struggle with anxiety, OCD, past trauma, social anxiety, or health anxiety, engaging in, in this type of thinking is a self-perpetuating cycle of worry. And even the simplest tasks can seem impossible. Unfortunately, catastrophizing scares your brain into thinking something's very wrong and unnecessarily activates your fight or flight response. Your brain cannot tell the difference between a real emergency and an imagined one, but it doesn't have to be this way. With a few simple strategies, you can learn to quiet your mind and find peace in the present moment. In this video, I will review five ways to stop overthinking and catastrophizing. First, one of the most effective ways to overcome overthinking and what if questioning is to practice mindfulness. Mindfulness is the practice of being present in the moment without judgment. It's about observing your thoughts and feelings without getting caught up in them, without responding to them and reacting to them as if they were true. When you practice mindfulness, you learn to notice when your mind starts racing and to gently bring it back to the present moment. Ask yourself what's happening in reality right now. Not what's going on in your head, but where are you? What do you see? What do you feel? What do you hear around you? There are many ways to practice mindfulness. One of the easiest ways is to simply take a few deep breaths and focus on your breath as it enters and leaves your body. When your mind starts to wander, just gently bring the attention back to your breath. Now, the second technique applies if you struggle with generalized anxiety with constant worry and overthinking. Now, when you catch yourself catastrophizing or imagining the worst case scenario, ask yourself if your thoughts are based in reality. Are you jumping to conclusions without evidence? Are you assuming the worst without considering other possibilities? Now, the third suggestion involves a group of techniques used in ACT therapy, and they're called diffusion techniques. And the purpose of them is to separate you from your thoughts. Now, you can do this in a number of different ways. You can start by first identifying that you're having a thought. Say to yourself, I'm having a thought that, and then fill in the blank. Other techniques that work include saying the thoughts in a silly voice singing the thoughts, saying the thoughts very slowly, or repeating the thoughts rapidly over and over again. Now you'll find that the thoughts lose their emotional power. The fourth technique is especially important if you have a history of OCD or health anxiety. You'll want to use strategies to stop rumination and overthinking because those mental activities can reinforce the OCD and health anxiety cycle. You may choose to do ERP, exposure and response prevention to stop overthinking. One method of ERP is an incidental or in the moment technique I developed called the IM method. It includes exposure, diffusion, mindfulness, and response prevention all in one technique. The IM method is an acronym where I stands for identify the thought or the urge to ruminate or overthinking that's happening. A means standing, stands for allowing that urge to overthink or that rumination or that thought to be there in the back of your mind. And then M is shifting your focus to something else in the moment. Now, shifting the focus is not distraction. It's more like shining a flashlight on one object in a dark room and then moving the flashlight to shine it on a different object. 
you know that that first object is still there, but you're focusing on a different object. Then move on to the best of your ability with your day. Now you can repeat that technique as often as needed. And finally, number five is an important to practice self-compassion if you're struggling with overthinking and what if questioning. Be kind to yourself, recognize that everyone experiences anxiety and fear at times. Don't judge yourself for having these thoughts and feelings. And as our thoughts and feelings are, you know, they're, at times they're uncontrollable. And one way to practice self-compassion is allowing yourself to be an imperfect human. When you notice yourself getting caught up in overthinking and negative thoughts, try to talk to yourself in a more understanding way that allows for flexibility and imperfection. Say things to yourself like, okay, there I go again, being human. Now, it's important to understand and address the underlying causes of the overthinking and what if questioning. For many people, anxiety and fear are linked to stress and a lack of self-care. So make sure that you're taking care of yourself by getting enough sleep, eating a healthy diet, exercising regularly. You can also try stress-reducing activities like yoga or meditation. Here's a playlist to help you with proven ways to reduce your daily stress. Until next time, I'll see you in session. Take care. Bye-bye.